Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we're in Isaiah chapter 10, beginning in verse number 1. This is our fifth series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. This series, the New Testament, is done. Along with the previous four series, are all archived at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. That's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. So go there, choose, click, listen. Study the Bible, any part of the Bible that you want to study, verse by verse, with me. Study at your pace, at your convenience. Again, that is at thebibleversebyverse.com. <clears throat> So let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Isaiah 10, 1. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed, This is God's world, and he's not happy when it's not run his way, but the devil's way. And God doesn't like unfair laws because that's what that is. And so he will punish the civil leaders who write those laws and vote for them. And God will also punish and then hold accountable the people in a free nation who knowingly vote for leaders who promote unjust laws. Two, to rob the needy of justice and to take what is right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. So God is against all civil leaders who take advantage of the poor and the vulnerable. And God will one day judge all civil leaders. God is going to compare how they govern against the word of God. And that is how they will be judged. Three, what will you do in the day of punishment and in the desolation which will come from afar. To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your glory? In other words, God says that you will not know what to do when I start punishing you. And God asked them, where where are you going to hide on judgment day? For without me, they shall bow down among the prisoners, and they shall fall among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So we've been seeing this reoccurring sentence from God for all this. His anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. We've been seeing this for quite some time now, as God has been talking about the judgment that's coming, and probably the judgment that they have begun to experience. And God keeps saying, as bad as that is, I'm not done. I'm still angry with you. You still haven't repented. God is upset with the Israel with the Israeli Israeli nation, I should say. And the wicked will not be able to avoid his punishment. Instead, they will simply cringe when God's wrath comes. He's not done. Look at verse 5. Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger, and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation, and against the people of my wrath. I will give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. 
the Assyrians didn't know the one true God, but God was still using them as his rod of correction, his rod of punishment to punish his people. They were bad people. The Assyrians were horrible. So they're going to be the whip that God uses to chastise his people. So let's read 6 and 7 together. I will send him, Assyria, against an ungodly nation and against the people of my wrath. I will give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Yet he does not mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off not a few nations. So the Assyrians, yeah, they're God's whip, but the Assyrians only think about being cruel. And all that they want to do is destroy and destroy because they are wicked and mean and arrogant. Nine, is not Kelno like Kar Chemish? Is not Hamath like Arphad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? The Assyrians are boasting about the cities that they have captured, and they're boasting as they draw closer to Judah and God's people, and they're saying, hey, their cities are just like the ones we've already beat up on, and we've already destroyed, tortured the people. 10. As my hand, this is Assyria talking, as my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols whose carved images excelled those of Jerusalem and Samaria, as I have done to Samaria and her idols, shall I not do also to Jerusalem and her idols? In other words, the king of Assyria, boy, he's just overflowing with arrogance. And it was starting to get the best of them. And this is a big mistake. The king is saying, that all the places that he has captured were strong, but he beat them anyway. He said they had plenty of gods. They all had plenty of gods, but none of those gods were a match for me. And then next he says that he's going to Jerusalem and defeat them and defeat their God in the same way. 12. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Lord has performed all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, that he will say, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his haughty looks. In other words, when the Lord is finished punishing Zion for their sins, using Assyria to do it, then he's going to punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the arrogant look in his eyes. Assyria thought that they controlled history because of their great power. But they were going to learn that there's a God in heaven who's in charge of history and that they were just a tool that God used to perform his righteous judgment. 13. For he says, by the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent. Also, I have removed the boundaries of the people and have robbed their treasures. So I have put down the inhabitants <clears throat> like a valiant man. Assyria was saying, they won all their battles by their own strength and by their own wisdom. They didn't give any credit to the one true God. Of course not. They didn't know him from the man in the moon. 14. My hand has found like a nest the riches of the people. And as one gathers eggs that are left, I have gathered all the earth. And there was no one who moved his wing nor opened his mouth, even with a peep. The king of Assyria says that he's tough. He is tough. And defeating those nations was as easy 
is picking eggs off the ground. He says, that's how great I am. 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him who chops with it? Or shall the saw exalt itself against him who saws with it? As if a rod could wield itself against those who lift it up. Or as if a staff could lift up as if it were not wood. God sets the record straight here. God says, Assyria, you think it's been you that's been doing all these things. You're simply my tool. You think that you're bigger than me. You think that you're going to come to Jerusalem and squash me. But that's like an axe boasting against the person who swings it. 16. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send leanness among his fat ones, and under his glory he will kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. So, in one night, it's exactly what happened. In one night, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died. 185,000. 50 some thousand Americans were killed in Vietnam. In one, in the 10 or, no, I think it was 20 years. But in one night, 10 years. In one night, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died by the hand of an angel. So where was their great power and great wisdom that night? God taught them a lesson about the foolishness of their pride in that one night. And they went home, whoever was left, with their tails between their legs. 17. So, the light of Israel will be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame. It will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. God tells Assyria that he will show them who is boss. God says that he will be like a fire, and they will be like straw, and he will consume them like a fire consumes straw, effortlessly, and they won't be so tough anymore. 18. And it will consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and they will be as when a sick man wastes away. In other words, God will destroy Assyria's forests, and he will destroy their fields, 19. Then the rest of the trees of his forest will be so few in number that a child, a child may write them. Whatever trees remain <clears throat> after God gets through with destroying Assyria, whatever trees remain will be so few that a child could count them with his hands and his fingers. My two-year-old grandson can count up to 12. That's about it. God says, that's about how many trees are going to be left. About as many as a little child can count when I'm done with them. They'll know who's boss. Sinners always end up knowing who's boss, and that boss is God. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible verse by verse. If you would like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, then pray for me and God's Word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Write a note, put it on your refrigerator door. Pray again later when you see that note. Keep praying for me and God's Word. That makes you a very important part of this ministry. And also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. Thanks for studying with me. So long, everyone.